In the days and in, in weeks following a flood or a wildfire, you'll constantly hear people talk about, they blame that on climate change. Even in this amendment, it references in, in line two that there are uh, rising sea levels and warming oceans, and it says that uh, the United Nations Climate Change Panel says that these human activities are, are, are uh, provoking all of this. Overregulation has consistently hurt small businesses. It has strangled uh, the growth capacity in our nation. It is the catalytic converter that's choking out the opportunity for our uh, roaring engine, our economy, to uh, produce what it needs to. I agree with my colleague that we do need fiscal sanity. Absolutely. And it's utter insanity not to deal with the climate emergency. You also spoke, uh, excuse me, my colleague also spoke about small businesses. Our capital city in Vermont, Montpelier, lost nearly every single small business in our downtown because of catastrophic flooding as a result of climate change. Every single business. We're still coming back for it. We don't have a functioning post office in our downtown. For Vermonters and rural communities across the country, climate change is here and it's having a catastrophic effect. We in Congress have a critical role to play in combating climate change and in investing in clean energy. And climate change is real and it's caused by human actions. And it's imperative that we act and act strongly to address the crisis. We're seeing storms and extreme weather we haven't seen before in this country because of climate change. And last summer, Vermonters weathered extreme flooding that left many communities devastated. And we're still actually rebuilding from, from that catastrophe. And this winter, Vermont has seen record low snowfall amounts and maple sugar makers are starting the tapping season the earliest ever. So we see in Vermont up close how climate change threatens the, the crop yields, the infrastructure, water and energy supplies, human health, and creates looming disaster assistance needs. It also threatens our economy. There's no question. In 2021 and 2022, the United States had 35 separate billion dollar extreme weather and climate related disaster events costing more than $180 billion in direct economic losses. Congressional Democrats and President Biden have tackled this issue head on. Last Congress, the Inflation Reduction Act made the greatest federal investment in history to fight climate change. It invested nearly 400 billion in climate solutions and clean technologies to deliver the single greatest investment in combating the climate crisis in American history. It also lowers costs for American families, creating jobs here at home, advancing climate justice, and positioning the United States as the global leader in clean energy. What we're de dealing with today are Republican policies that consistently put polluters over people and jeopardize our family and our planet's futures. Republicans HR1, their number one priority this Congress is a massive giveaway to corporate polluters. It guts our bedrock environmental laws and jeopardizes clean air and safe drinking water. I'm here today calling on my colleagues not to roll back the investments that we've made to improve our future. The burden of his expansion of government regulatory regimes is borne by small businesses, innovators, and yes, American families. This amendment seeks to replace deregulation section of our budget policy uh, to encourage more spending on Green New Deal policies. Uh, the Inflation Reduction Act included billions of taxpayer dollars dedicated to these progressive climate provisions that uh, President Biden and the Democrats put in place years, several years ago. I would encourage my colleagues to take a look at something I, I, I comment or commend uh, Representative Gary Palmer from Alabama has put together in the policy booklet Go through and actually look at what the UN panel on climate change actually says. To, to quote them and not be able to go to look at the, the, spec, the specificity of what they actually say, they talk about flooding, hurricanes, tornadoes, and drought wildfire combos. You know what they say? 
They said that there's no causation and effect in the United States for those things on climate change. Yet every media outlet and every talking point up here that wants to advance the church of nature ideology always contends the opposite of what the UN themselves and their own panel actually says. Climate change is here and it's having a catastrophic effect. It's not just a threat to our small businesses, but also our agricultural industry, our natural resources, our very livelihoods. It's a threat to our survival, our community's survival. We need budgets that create and sustain good paying green jobs, enable our farmers to withstand climate change, protect people living in our low lying areas from flooding and transition us to a clean energy economy. This is not just about the here and now, it's about the future and I urge my colleagues to support my amendment to the budget resolution. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I thank the gentlelady from Vermont. The question is on agreeing to the amendment offered by Ms. Ballant. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed, no. no. In the opinion of the chair, the noes have it. Mr. Chair, I ask for a recorded vote. Ms. Ballant asked for a recorded vote pursuant to our unanimous consent, our being me and the ranking member. Uh, we'll postpone the roll call vote until later in the markup. Are there any other amendments? 